Business, education, government, all fairly obvious, I think. Business has made the biggest running with futures and foresight work. But in my opinion, it has also really only drawn from the field a few of the tools and approaches that reflect its own interests. This helps to explain why scenarios are so popular. Because all you basically need is a facilitator, a group, a whiteboard, and a, and a marker. And boom, you, anyone can go and do scenarios. And what you get is not really worth having. Because to do scenarios well requires, as Joe and others at Swinburne know very well, months of careful preparation. It's a big deal getting them right. But unfortunately, when they're picked up in, in context where people haven't got much time, want to get the answer, let's get this done quickly, you get trivial results. Garbage in, garbage out, as it were. So business has made quite extensive use of some limited futures methods. Government, in its own odd way, has done so as well. We had here a national science and technology foresight project for some time. Again, Andrew's paper talks about that, evaluates it, makes some suggestions for doing it better. Education, they don't even know what the options are. At the system level, education has been running blind for decades and decades. There is no systematic connection between the intense world inside education and the dynamic outer world in which, in fact, it's all located. So there's a systemic deficiency, in my view, in education systems. So one of our goals here, part of the output of our uh, Pratt Foundation funded research program is exactly this, to rehearse these steps towards social foresight and to come up with some ideas about a national foresight strategy.